Hello and welcome to the in-depth overview of the HDECAL tool. So first things first, how to get this thing installed. It's very easy. Uh, you just go to your Epic Games launcher after buying the asset on FAB, obviously. And then in your, your FAB library, if it doesn't appear here, you just click here to uh, update your library. And here should eventually appear HDECAL tools. I have it done here. I have searched here Edge in the search directory. And then you click install. And it is actually also available for the 5.5. I don't. It doesn't appear here because I have it already installed. Okay, but then you select your Unreal Engine version and click install. Okay. Once you have it installed, just to make sure that the tool is here, you just go in your project and click Edit Plugins. And here you search for Edge. You just activate the Edge Decal tool, and if it asks you to reboot, you just reboot your project. Once you are here, this is very important actually. You just click control spacebar and here in settings you're going to activate show engine content and show plugin content if you don't have it already uh, shown then we're going to go instead of selection we're going to go to scriptable tools and here in the each the edge decal material we're going to click this little folder over here okay uh, and then we're going to go to the root of the of the content of the plugin, which we're going to go to HDCAL tools content. And here we have these HDCAL tool examples. And we're going to click here. We're going to say don't save. And here is the HDCAL tool example map. Okay. What can you find here? Well, here you can find uh, all the HDCALs that are included in the package. Okay. With their two versions, the normal only and the color plus normal, as you can see. Okay. And additionally, uh, you can also find some mesh decals. Uh, we'll uh, see this in another video in the future. So, okay, let's start playing with the tool. To do that, we're going to grab this asset over here. We're going to do Control C, Control B. We're going to copy this asset here, so we, we have some space. And I'm just going to make a bunch of copies in case we need it in the future to demonstrate to demonstrate certain features of the tool. So now we're going to go to Script Tools. We're going to go to Edge Decal Tools. Okay, and here we can start playing. So this is the tool by default, and as you can see, you can already start toying with the tool. So for example, I'm going to go here in the bottom, I'm just going to left click, and then if I want an edge decal here, left click, left click, and with the automatic edge detection features, congratulations, you just put your first edge decal. It is really that easy. And this is actually a tool that I made for myself because I needed a quick way to place edge decals all along my level. Okay, so before we start digging in the settings, just one quick 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 uh, bit of info for the each decal tool to work okay your model i mean the model where you are going to place the edge decal which is this one okay your static mesh needs to have the collision to use complex collision as simple obviously you can also use boxes box collisions and things like that but if the collision is not precise uh uh, the edge decal placement will not be precise. That's why when we use the use complex collision as simple, we're actually using the triangles of the mesh as collision, and that will mean that this is a super precise collision. Okay. So uh, let's dig in. If I go to the edge decal tool, the first setting we have here is the inverted decal. This setting is because what if instead of placing a decal in an in the outer edge, I wanted to place it in an inner edge. So if I click this, now I can place an inverted decal over this edge over here. And as you can see, I can go here and tada! Now I have placed another edge an, an edge decal here. But as you can see, this edge decal it is very very big. So what if I wanted to place a smaller edge decal? Don't worry. That's why you have decal size. So instead of this, I'm just going to change this. And now when I place the the edge decal over here, as you can see, this is much more smaller. And perhaps for this edge over here, this is more correct. Okay. So let's continue. And uh, obviously we have the decal material. This is super easy. Let's put this as it was. 
Uh, there is a library included with the edge decal tool of amazing edge decals. We have 11 decals, okay, and both have their uh, only normal version, and it also have the normal uh, plus color, okay? Uh, usually, I like to use only normal, so the surfaces um, that the edge decal is affecting can blend more seamless. But let's, I don't know, let's let's grab, let's grab, uh, warm concrete is my favorite one. Let's grab the warm concrete and let's just put some edge decal here. Oh, what is going on? There's actually nothing going on. I'm just using the inverted mode. Let me change to normal mode. And as you can see, the material also has some settings, some tricks, very cheap trips. So it doesn't matter how your model is going. The texture is never going to have a stretching. And the only thing that this tool is doing is it is placing static meshes or instantiate static meshes. There is no splines or no other tricks that may seem very good, but uh, they are very costly in the CPU or the GPU. These are your normal static or instant static meshes placed on your models. If you want to, if you're worried about the blending, okay, if we go to shader complexity, as you can see, oh, this is uh, pink and this is white, what the fuck? This is the blend mode of a normal decal, so it has the cost that a normal decal will have. But in the end of the video, uh, if you're worried about it, don't worry, because we're going to see a way to further optimize the shader complexity of the edge decal tool, okay? But not now, we're going to see that in the end of the video, okay? So let's continue, because this is uh, self-explanatory. You select the material and that's it. Um, then we have the use guide. The use guide is a very interesting one because, as you can see, when I place edge decals here, there's this uh, yellow guide that appears. And if I unselect that, I place the decal just without the guide. It's really that simple. Okay, and you can select the, you can place your decals, whatever you want, but without using a guide. Okay, I like to use the guide, but <coughs> again, it is it is up to you. Aside from that, we have the vertex snap. The vertex snap it is a very interesting feature because what it is going to do is it is going to snap your mouse once it detects that there is a vertex in the model. Okay. So, as you can see, the vertex are in red, and if I unselect the vertex snap, uh, I don't get the snapping on the vertex. I still get the edge detection, and we'll see that in a session. Uh, in a second, as you can see, if I hover my mouse over here, it actually detects that this is an edge, which is absolutely amazing. Okay? So, let me activate again the vertex snap, and, uh, oh, sorry, I forgot the edge detection threshold. We're going to see in a second. But if I activate back the vertex snap and I change this, this is how far you need to be from a vertex to the snap for taking place. So if I put two instead of eight, as you can see, I need to be much closer to a vertex to be able to do this snap, okay? Aside from that, let's uh, take a look now at the edge detection threshold because it is a very interesting one too. So... Let's imagine that I am setting an edge decal here, okay, and I'm just going to put a, a put it here, and I just want to put this in this corner. But as you can see, uh, I cannot properly place it here, so that's why we have the edge detection threshold. If I put it at ten here, as you can see, now I am I am using a much bigger sphere, and if I want to place an edge decal in an edge, it is amazing. But if I wanted to place here, it's kind of bullshit. So let me put it at 0 0.5. And I can approach, but I still get some errors. Don't worry, we can actually set it to 0. And for this kind of situation, this is amazing because you can go here and say, OK, manual placement. And you have your decal straight to the corner, which is exactly what we want. OK. So we have seen the edge detection, we have seen the use guide, the vertex snap, and the vertex snap threshold. So now, uh, let's leave the cool distance or the fed distance at the end, <coughs> and let's see another further optimization because it's uh, the edge decal mesh, because this is an amazing one. So let's imagine that I place this uh, edge decal here, and as you can see, okay, in reality, the edge decal, oops, I clicked, uh, 
let me place it again, so we don't have that, okay, something like this, okay. So in reality, the edge decal, okay, it is, it, all, it has a visible part from here to here, but it is actually using this thing, this entire thing as a model, okay, and that is not ideal because this is something that we don't really using and it is uh, consuming resources. So there is actually a way to fix that. And with the tool, you can actually use your own meshes if you want. But with the tool, if you click the folder, we have included an slim edge decal. And if you select this one here, as you will be able to see now, now my edge decal is using a much more narrow model and obviously if we compare this one with this one this is super big super chunky and this one is much more smaller we also have included an inverted edge decal uh, slim okay but why don't use this as a base for everything because it depends on the material you're using so if for example i'm using the worn material okay as you are going to see in a second let me delete this decal as you can see this the, the texture in this meta in this decal is so big that it actually gets a little bit of cut out over here and over here and over here it's just an optimization thing okay you could probably get away with this one even with a worn decal but uh there's that okay so that's really it for the base of the tool now let's begin talking about optimization because these settings are amazing so with use instance static mesh okay ah uh, sorry sorry let's uh, do a quick one uh, the attached to surface setting is amazing the only thing that means is every decal you put will automatically be attached to the surface it is being applied which is absolutely amazing so you move this model and all the decals go with it okay obviously if you check that the decal will float over there okay so next settings which are the very important ones if we're going to use the use instance static mesh and let me set some numbers that won't make a lot of sense but let me put 64 and here 32 and now i'm going to make another edge decal here okay from here to here and i'm going to click accept and look what is happening it seems that nothing has happened but if i put my camera back as you can see the decal is fading away automatically why is that because it is using these numbers to fade the instance static meshes and this is this not this is not only a fade in the material but actually if we go to the wireframe mode as you can see when the fa when the fade has finished okay the entire model disappear disappears and it's automatically configured for you obviously these values are used for showcasing purposes okay um, you should probably use bigger values but this is a great 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 optimization so aside from this aside from this we can also instead of use instance static mesh uh, let me show you what it means so let's put some edge decals here okay and if you use instance static meshes okay your edge decal it is actually going to be um, a single model with a single instance inside with many many with a list of 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 instanced models okay and here you can see the 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 instances okay uh but you treat this as a single model if instead of this you are going to use normal static meshes you can click here and let me do exactly the same and as you can see now every piece of me of decal it's its own simple and good old static mesh and i can do things so for example if i want to change here the scale i can say 0 0.2 and here 0 0.2 
and I can like manually uh, manually tweak the the static meshes. Okay. Usually, I prefer to leave it as instead static mesh by default, but again, it is up to you. Depends on the situation or how do you want your edge decal to work. This is something that you're going to use or something that you are not going to use. Okay. Fantastic. So this is the base optimization, but now let's talk about material optimization because, as you can see, uh, my material is kind of reddish, and this is not the best. But again, this is the same cause that a normal decal has. Uh, the only thing that happens with decals is that decals do not appear in the shader complexity uh, phase uh, optimization view mode, but it has the same cost as a decal. So let's open the material very quickly. And let's open the parent material. So first thing, thing if you want to deactivate the auto stretching and the randomization of the decal in edge section, okay, you just unplug this append here and it will get deactivated. And then if we want to further optimize the edge decal, so what I'm going to do is something that does does not work only for normal only decals. Okay, so this is a setting that you will have to use if your decal has a base color in the bottom too but uh, one optimization we can do is we can just change this to surface the material domain and the blend mode we're going to put it to mask and now uh, sorry let me reconnect the opacity to opacity mask and now as you can see my edge decal it is a mask edge decal and the 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 the, the, op the shader complexity is much greater now okay but it's not even that we can even go one step further which is the next uh between the multiply and the opacity mask we can put a dither and of course this is only going to work if you are using a, a temporal anti-aliasing or the uh, temporal super resolution which are by the follow what Unreal Engine uses. And now, see that the edge of my decal, it gets smooth, even if the material uh, is has a mask blend mode. And we can check this in the optimization blend mode. And as you can see, it has this kind of dither over here, which is enabling my decal to be exactly as it is. The only problem, of course, is that the color of my decal is not exactly the same as the color on the bottom. So you would probably need to uh, copy this color over here and set it in the base color here. Because now you cannot use normal only decal. But again, uh, I don't really know the color is completely matching and the decal uh, is absolutely amazing in every kind of decal that is included in the tool. Okay, With a dither blend mode, which is absolutely amazing. And really, that's it. I don't. I wouldn't worry too much about this, honestly. I would just use normal. Uh, I like to use uh, normal edge decals because it blends two surfaces very well, like for example, concrete and bricks. Okay, so it's not something I I would worry. But uh, let's talk a little bit about some problems that the tool has. So one of the problems it has is that, especially in the color plus normal decals, okay, which are decals that also has uh, some texture, not only normal, some of those, like for example, this one over here, which is the, it, it is a decal with a lot of textures and a lot of texture variation. If you have sections like this one with a lot of cuts, okay, as you will see, uh, it doesn't really work, okay? But if you are using decals that are more, more, uh, let's say, more similar in the entirety of, of the surface, it will work indeed, okay? And aside from that, that's really it. I hope you like the tool. It is super lightweight and it will add a lot of realism to your environments. And that's it. If you have any question, please leave it in the comments or in the Discord or in the Fab uh, forum post of the tool. And let's see you in the next video where we're going to take a look at the also include for free mesh tool. But we'll see that in the next one. Bye bye.